Let's see how Google hopes to connect more of the things we buy into a platform that continuously gets better through their data services. In the previous episode, we went over how Google wants to make information more accessible and affordable through Android smartphones and tablets. But the upcoming Android L release isn't all about smartphones. As a company known for taking risk, at its core, Google is an internet service company that provides the world with information that is accessible and useful. In other words, Google's mission is to help people find stuff. It helps people find interesting things, and Google helps companies find people that might be interested in the things that they want to sell. After monopolizing search, creating other great internet services, and creating the largest smartphone platform in the world, Google is now hoping through Android L to make the screens that we use every day smarter and more useful. Now let me take a step back and say that last year I thought Google was going to take a more integrated approach in the smartphone market by owning and managing the hardware, software, and internet services with Motorola. But after selling the hardware business to Lenovo, it's clear to me now that Google is focused on building a strong server-side infrastructure that will support future platforms that may change the way we work and study, the way we drive our cars, the way we wear technology, and even the way we watch TV and play games. So let's dig into it. Android has been Google's most successful platform by far. After Apple proved the smartphone experience could be better and more profitable through a tightly controlled integrated experience, Google Google proved to the world that the smartphone experience could be cheaper and more open and flexible through a more commoditized strategy. We aren't building a vertically integrated product. What we are doing is building an open platform at scale. Eventually, both companies knocked BlackBerry out of the market and forced Nokia and Microsoft to join forces in order to just survive. And today, 85% of the smartphone market is dominated by Android. But early on, because Android is open source, Google had very little control over the platform. Amazon forked Android to create their own app store. Samsung and HTC created their own front-end designs that delayed updates to those customers. And Google even paid most of the profits of the Android market to cell phone providers in exchange for promoting their platform to new cell phone customers. But today, things are different. In 2012, Google launched the rebranded Google Play Store, giving the company a bigger chunk of the revenue from the app economy. Google Play services ships every six weeks. 93% of our users are on the latest version of Google Play services across all versions of Android. So now Google has control of Android through Google Play. And Google Play makes Android more secure. We automatically scan every single application for malware. And if users opt in, we even scan applications from outside of Google Play so that if your phone gets stolen, users have full control to disable their phones. Privacy productions, they can control data that is shared from the device. And Google, through Android, has built the APIs and server-side tools that developers need to spark future growth in new devices and experiences. We want to work to create a seamless experience across all these connected devices. So here are a few principles. We are making everything contextually aware. We want the experience to be voice enabled. We want the experience to be seamless. All these connected experiences work based on your smartphone. You know those annoying times when you can't get to your phone easily, but you still want to check something? Android Wear is the solution. Android Wear makes it easy for developers to reach users on this new form factor using precisely the same tools we're already familiar with on Android phones and tablets, enabling very brief interactions with the device. He can simply raise his watch or tap the screen to switch into vibrant full color that you're already seeing here. If Jeff receives a notification which buzzes his phone, his watch will vibrate on his wrist and show him what's up at a glance. It includes information from Google Now, apps running on Jeff's phone, and apps running directly on the wearable itself. And when there's a page indicator, Jeff can swipe horizontally to see more details. OK, Google. Remind me to check my mailbox when I get home. When you swipe away a notification on the watch, it disappears from the phone. You can either swipe to reject the call from his wrist or swipe up to choose from one of these quick SMS replies. You can set do not disturb with a single downward swipe from the top of the screen. Now you'll see that Jeff has music controls on his watch. So his phone is already displaying relevant information for his trip. You can see his flight status and even show his boarding pass. Jeff can see how many steps he's taken today, along with a step count history for the week. On devices that support it, 
He can even check his heart rate after a jog. Pinterest app will let you know when you're near a place that's been pinned by someone you follow, which gives you turn-by-turn -turn directions on your watch. Just one more tap to pay, and the pizza's on its way. When a watch is connected, the wearable portion of the app is automatically installed. Let's go into my favorites and choose this beef brisket chili. The recipe will immediately appear on my watch, so it's always right there with me. As I move from step to step, the phone stays in sync too. Whenever a recipe calls for a timer, like this four hours in the oven, I can do that right away on my wrist. The LG G Watch, the Samsung Gear Live, the Moto 360, is the first watch to adopt the round Android Wear UI. Also, Android makes driving cars safer for everyone by extending parts of Android to the screen inside newer cars. Android Auto. It's completely voice enabled. And the phone casts the Android Auto experience to the car's screen. And use the familiar car controls, steering wheel buttons, console dials, and touch screens to control Android Auto. All of the apps we see here are running on Andy's phone. This also means that Andy has a personalized experience that he can bring with him into any compatible car. The Young Museum is open from 9.30 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. on Wednesday. Navigate there. We're starting with a full set of APIs for audio and messaging applications. The first cars with Android Auto will be rolling off dealer lots before the end of this year. Also, Google hopes to make it easier for developers to make games and media experiences on newer TVs. Each TV manufacturer has a different OS with different APIs and programming model. There's now one Android SDK for all form factors. And Android TV requires just a D-pad with voice input. It's a hardware remote control, it's a game controller, or even a virtual controller on a phone or tablet. So it enables Android-based TVs to handle video from sources such as HDMI, TV tuners, and IPTV receivers. And the UI provides a unified view of your channels in a familiar channel hopping UI with the channel information on the top. I can keep watching while I browse. As I scroll down, you get immediate access to your applications ordered by how often you use them. Scroll down again, you get access to your apps also ordered by usage. We decided to build a core search functionality directly into the experience, powered by voice. Breaking Bad. Google will interpret the result, get me a result for the popular TV show. If I scroll down, you'll see information on cast members. Scroll down again, I get related search terms, also YouTube clips at the bottom. I can also pivot on cast members. So for example, I can click on Anna Gunn. I'll get that nice material transition. I'll get information on the actress. Scroll down, I can get movies and TV uh, shows that she's starred in, even uh, YouTube clips of interviews with the actress. Oscar-nominated movies from 2002. Google will interpret that query and, of course, get me all my Oscar-nominated movies. Now, Search Course is backed by Google's Knowledge Graph, so I can also ask a question. Who played Katniss in The Hunger Games? Our Play Movies team was able to take their existing tablet app for Android, quickly add the leanback classes on top of it to produce a great TV experience. They now have the same APK for TV, phones, and tablets. If you don't have your remote handy, you can always use your Android Wear watch as a D-pad. So I can go back, let's go up and watch. Uh, now you see me, I think that'd be a good show. Three out of four Android users are playing games. So he's playing on his tablet. I've got my game controller. Let's try this. Full Google Cast support. So you can use it just like a Chromecast. The store will open officially in the fall with the launch of L, the entire 2015 HD and 4K smart TV ranges from Sony and the 2015 ranges of Sharp and TP Vision's Philips will run on Android TV. I will also be seeing streaming boxes powered by Razer, Asus, and others launching this fall. And as Cast gets better, so does Android TV. While Android TV is a solution for new TVs, Chromecast is a way to get older TVs connected to the Google ecosystem. Usage per device has increased 40%. We want to build an ecosystem of Google Cast Ready apps and Google Cast Ready devices. Consumers can find these at chromecast.com slash apps or from the Chromecast app on your phone, tablet, or laptop by allowing others to cast to your TV without needing to be on the same Wi-Fi network. Simply press the button and we'll allow, to allow them to connect to nearby devices. Now this is an opt-in feature, so you always have control over who can cast to your TV. Your TV is now the largest picture frame in the house. And you'll see backdrops a new option in the app drawer. And from here, you can personalize the feed Simply turn on photos, you can select from one or multiple Google Plus photo albums. Places, 
which brings geospatial images from Google Maps to your TV. We also have other topics like news and lifestyle and Google Plus featured photos. Mirror any Android device to, to your television. Just go to your Chromecast app on your Android device and select Cast Screen. Now we built our own protocol to reduce latency and frame drops. So the experience feels really natural and smooth. So instead of huddling out on my small phone, I ended up opening up Google Earth and projecting it right to the TV. And Google Chromebooks will bring together Android and Chrome under one device. Every time you approach your Chromebook and your phone is with you, we will automatically unlock your Chromebook and sign you into your favorite applications and services. So the same Google Now cards which you see on your phone, you see them on your Chromebook. You will start seeing those incoming call notifications on your Chromebook. Text messages on your Chromebook as well popped up a notification and said your phone is running out of your battery. The same Android application is now available in the launcher on your Chromebook. For developers, we want this to work with as little modifications as, uh, as possible. And now we know that both Apple and Google are focused on niche markets that have a really dedicated user base, fitness and games. Google Fit. So we're providing a single set of APIs to manage fitness data from, from apps and sensors on both cross-platform devices and on wearables. So you'll see that Noom is able to combine my workouts, nutritional information, and my weight, but only with your explicit permission. Adidas has a collection of smart sensors that they're opening up to developers for the first time. Nike will be publishing Nike Fuel to the Fit platform, meaning that your app can use it to give better insights into a user's fitness. Google Play Games is now the fastest growing mobile game network of all time. Your game profile changes automatically based on the games you play and your achievements in each game. Users will be able to see bookmarks of their progress in the Play Games app. Quest is an online time-based goal that you can set up in your game, such as collecting a bunch of in-game items on a specific day. We're happy to announce that direct carrier billing is now going to be available on more devices, on tablets. It'll even work on tablets that are Wi-Fi only. And we look forward to building more amazing experiences with you. So while Apple controls both the hardware and software in iOS, most of Android's innovations are coming through Google Play while relying on other companies to build the hardware. But both these companies aren't leaving anything to chance. They've been taking some big risks with some of the billions of dollars in cash they've been stacking up over the years. Apple recently acquired Beats, its largest acquisition of an independent consumer brand that may benefit from Apple's expertise in hardware and also give the company a way into the wearable technology market, while Google also acquired Nest, a smart appliance company that may benefit from Google's ability to handle and organize large sets of information. But the one thing that I see critically important for any of these innovations to take up is how they connect to existing platforms that people are comfortable using, whether it's iOS, Android, Facebook, or whatever other platforms come about in the future. So thank you guys for subscribing and for watching this episode of Beta. And thank you guys for putting up with me learning and getting comfortable with talking on camera like this. Uh, I know it's a skill that... I'm naturally not really good at, but these videos give me the opportunity to hopefully improve. So any feedback you have, much appreciated, especially critiques, um, how I could get better. And uh, don't worry, I want to bring back phone wars and gaming wars in the traditional style of video uh, that are more actually scripted and thought out um, rather than just this type of off-the-cuff speaking. Um, but thank you guys again for your patience and uh, letting me improve in this way. Stay tuned for the next videos. Um, I want to go over a lot of the changes that are going on in social media uh, with companies like Facebook, Instagram, Vine, and how they're changing the way attention is drawn towards other new content that's coming up and bubbling up on the internet. And then I was thinking about going over um, the business models of different companies and how they hope to make money. Maybe a video on how Facebook makes money, how Twitter makes money. Maybe a video about how Pixar was able to change the way movies are made. So thank you guys for subscribing, sharing, liking these videos, and I will talk to you in the next video where we continue to look at how people push technology forward.